Welcome to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I am so excited and so encouraged about this chapter. It was hard for me to get through chapter 2 because I was so excited about this chapter as well. And I know that you are too. Um, before I forget, I'm sorry that I did not give you my chapter theme for chapter 2 last week. So I'm going to give it to you now because I know some of y'all are going to ask me what was your chapter theme. So my chapter theme for chapter two was the gospel proclaimed despite opposition. We saw the word gospel in chapter two four times in the first nine verses. We understand that they faced um, opposition, that they were mistreated, that they suffered. But despite all of that, they still proclaimed the gospel and that's exactly what we have to do we have to be imitators of them some of us have faced much opposition in our families in our churches in the um, communities that we are in but regardless that doesn't change the gospel that doesn't change the truth of the gospel and that we have to continue that and carry that on and so that is my thing now, before um, we get into chapter 3, I do want to read um, a verse out of chapter 2. Um, it's not the verse right before chapter 3, but it's one that I kind of talked to you a little bit about in chapter 2, and I just, I just can't get over it. So, I'm going to... I'm going to share that before we uh, start reading together in chapter 3. Um, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you're learning, what God's showing you, what He's teaching you. I need you to teach me to do in, in th that same respect. I want to learn what He's teaching you so I can learn it too. Let's pray. Father, you are such a wonderful Savior and a Father to us. And you take care of us. And you have given us the truth in your word. You have made it possible that we have it in our possession. And oh, how encouraging it is. So God, I just pray that you would um, have your way right here, right now. You know who's listening. You know what they need. And I pray, God, that you would use me to speak to them, encourage them, and, and spur them on to be hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, chapter 2, verse 13, before we get into chapter 3. For this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. Now, chapter 3, before I forget it, let me go ahead and give you my chapter thing. Faith strengthens encourages and comforts others let me tell you something i shared with my nephew this week people are watching the situation that he's in right now it's very difficult and it's it's a hard one it really is but i said you would be surprised at how many people are going to be watching you and your walk of faith through this trial and it's one that doesn't end overnight. It's one he's going to have to carry for a very long time. And our faith in these situations and us displaying the faith that we have in God despite the circumstances, people are watching and that it strengthens them. It encourages them and it comforts them. And I've shared this with many of you before and I, this is something I was sharing with him. Years, many, many years ago, back in the 90s, um, I watched my friend go through some very trying, very difficult times. And we weren't as close then as we are now. But I was one of those bystanders that was watching how she was going to deal with the circumstances that she was in. 
She never missed a beat. I'm sure she cried in her pillow. I'm sure she faced uh, discouragement, but she never quit. She continued on. It didn't change who she was, and it certainly did not shake her faith in whom she served. And so, because I was a witness to that, I saw all that. She didn't even know I was watching that closely, but I was. And because she did that, I can't tell you the countless times that I have drawn strength and encouragement from that very thing. And it, oh, how comforting it has been to me because I was able to see and watch her example and I want to be that type of example so I was trying to encourage my nephew hey you've got to hang in there you've got to be that because people are looking and then when you come on the other side of this thing because you will you're going to be so glad that you your faith never wavered and that you stuck it out and you served God wholeheartedly despite the circumstances didn't plan on saying that but that's for somebody let's look at chapter 3 Therefore, let's find out what the therefore is there for. When we could endure it no longer, we thought it best to be left behind at Athens alone, and we sent Timothy, our brother. And not only our brother Timothy did they send, but Timothy was God's fellow worker in the what? He was God's fellow worker in the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you as to your faith. And then he tells us why. So that no one would be disturbed by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we have been destined for this. They knew it was coming. Knew it was coming. And they shared with others that they knew it was coming. Verse 4. For indeed, when we were with you, we, Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, we kept telling you in advance, they were warning them, that we were going to suffer affliction, and so it came to pass, as you know. For this reason, when I could endure it no longer, I also sent to find out about your faith for fear that the tempter might have tempted you and our labor would be in vain. And so we learned, remember, in chapter 1, their labor was not in vain because these people turned from their idols to the true and living God. Verse 6, new paragraph. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and has brought us good news of your faith and love and that you always think kindly of us, longing to see us just as we also long to see you for this reason, brethren, in all our distress and affliction, we were comforted about you through your faith. Hang in there. As K. Arthur has said so many times, hangest thou in there, baby, regardless of what is going on. People are watching. You will be a blessing. You will be an encouragement. You will be um, a beacon of hope and light to people when they know what you're going through and then when they find out what you've come through. Verse 8, for we... For now we really live if you stand firm in the Lord. Encourage somebody to stand firm in the Lord despite what is going on. That's what I want to do for you. Rick and I are, are, are experiencing things this year that we didn't think we would ever experience. Going through things that are unheard of. And he, you know, he said just this morning, he was like, man. We have really been attacked. Um, Satan has thrown us some stuff this year. But we have to carry on. We will carry on. And we know that we can believe and we have faith in God our Father. We have faith in the truth of God's Word. Verse 9. For what thanks can we render to God for you in return for all the joy with which we rejoice before our God on your account as, as we night and day keep praying most earnestly 
that we may see your face and may complete what is lacking in your faith. He's asking that question. Verse 11, new paragraph. Now may our God and Father himself and Jesus our Lord direct our way to you. And may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people, just as we also do for you. Why? so that he may establish your hearts. How? Without blame. In holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. May the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people. May he do that in us. Some notes that I posted in the margin of my Bible on this very short chapter, only 13 verses, is that the key word in this chapter is the word faith. Two things are clear in this chapter. They needed a break from their suffering of affliction. And these people were still on their hearts and minds as they sent Timothy their brother and God's fellow worker to strengthen and encourage their faith. They didn't get caught up in self. They didn't get caught up in their afflictions and their circumstances. They were constantly thinking about those that they had ministered to. Despite their afflictions, they never lost sight of the Thessalonians. I was also encouraged to find that Timothy brought them the good news of the faith, love, thoughts of kindness, and their longing to see Paul and Silvanus, to which brought them comfort in their sufferings. I thought it was so sweet that Paul and si uh, Silvanus prayed night and day and earnestly that they would see them again and complete whatever was lacking in their faith. And I put, oh, to have a heart of a servant like that. I wrote, I pray my faith in God, despite my circumstances, encourages others because others have done so to me. So many of you have been so encouraging to me. You send me texts. I know that some of you pray for me every morning. You send me private messages and encourage me and build up my faith. And it, that is just priceless to me. And I'm so thankful that you take a minute and you just reach out to love on me and to encourage me. And that's what I try to do to you. And I do try to spur you on. And I do try to encourage you to be in the Word every day. And apply the truths to what we're learning. I love what we're learning about these authors and their heart and their passion about building up the faith of others and displaying the Word of God. I love that. And what, I mean, that's just such an example to us. For whatever reason, and I don't know when it happened, but when I got to the end of chapter 3, when I had studied this, uh, or heard somebody preach on this, or teach on this, I do not know. But I had written a passage beside the very last verse of chapter 3. And it was the chapter John 17. And this is Jesus speaking. And I wanted to read this to you. You can turn with me uh, in your Bibles. And I wanted to read it to you. Again, Jesus is speaking. And, and the title in this particular Bible that I'm using is the High Priestly Prayer. But then when we get over to verse 13, it's talking about the disciples in the world. And that's us, those who follow Jesus. 
And I want to read it to you and you'll understand why in just a moment. Jesus spoke these things and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father... Glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. That tells us he was before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Don't you want to be a keeper of God's word? Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me I have given to them, and they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you, and they believed that you sent me. Jesus said, I ask on their behalf, I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all the things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may, may be one even as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the son of perdition, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Now we go to talking about the disciples in the world. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. He says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world I do not ask you to take them out of the world but to keep them from the evil one they are not of the world even as I am not of the world sanctify them in your truth your word is truth anybody need to be sanctified in the truth I do Verse 18, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Jesus said, I have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified. How? In truth. God's word is true. Stay in the truth. Jesus says, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me, he says. Now, Verses 22 through 26, this is talking about the future glory, according to this particular Bible I'm reading from. That's the subtitle. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity. You see the theme here. So that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am so that they may see my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, 
yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them and will make it known so that the love with which you loved me may be where? May be in them and I, Jesus said, in them. I, when I read that, and I was so glad that I had written John 17 at the end of verse, uh, the last verse in chapter 3. And I thought, what a ripple effect. That Jesus came, Jesus had his disciples, and then his disciples discipled others. They became disciples. Then we come upon Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, and they're discipling. And the church of Thessalonians, they grabbed a hold of that. They were encouraged. They became imitators of Paul and Timothy and Silvanus. And they forsook is that right? They forsook their idols and turned to the true living God. Do you see the ripple effect? And so they have passed the baton to us that you and I would do the same. And I hope that's your goal. It certainly is mine. You pray for me and I'll pray for you and I'll see you next week to look at chapter four. God bless you.